Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our sacrament service today. Hopefully you have your your emblems and your uh, wine ready. And today we're going to use a prayer from uh, the combined prayer on the bread and wine from Community of Christ. Um, I'm afraid I'm on my own today. If you can hold in your prayers, Kyle, who has not been well, uh, a really bad head cold, and we can pray for him. And we also pray for others that are ill and in need at this time. First of all, I will invite the Spirit to be with us throughout the day as we rest on the Sabbath day. Loving Creator God, we ask that your Spirit will be with us and we feel the love of a father and a mother as we feel the, your Holy Spirit in us. And we ask you to join us and be with us today and every day, that you will guide us and help us. I've said these things in your gift to us, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we had our prayer, our No Faith in Fossil Fuels uh, vigil on Thursday night. Uh, I was at Community of Christ with Kyle, and we had um, four people there with us, plus one online watching. And uh, Andrew Fellows and Philip were in London, and uh, they did their slot for an hour, and somebody from the public uh, stayed and listened and was interested. And it's part of our service to, a uh, part of our duty as a Christian to, to love God's creation. So if you've got your, your compile your bread and your wine ready, I shall say the blessing. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. If you like to bow or kneel, whatever's best for you. Eternal God, we ask you in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread and wine to the souls of all those who receive them, that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the body and the blood of your Son, and witness unto you, O God, that you are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Sabbath message, I want to talk to you guys about 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 
Now, I know that seems like a very simple scripture. We have a Bible here. This is a this is an old Bible that I've got. And so this is the scriptures, right? Everything that's in here is all scripture given by inspiration to God, except there's a small problem with that. Uh, this particular scripture wasn't scripture when it was written. It was just a letter. It was an epistle. Uh, the Gospels were missionary tracts. There was no New Testament. So all scripture, is all scripture then just the Torah? Well, that wouldn't be all, the five books of Moses. Well, I guess it could be the other Jewish scriptures, including the book of Enoch at that time. And that could be all scriptures. That kind of makes sense. But if that's true, then that means we can completely discard the New Testament. So we don't we don't even need this whole Bible according to the scripture verse. So I, I don't think that that's accurate. Um, so what do you think he means here? I think, to be quite clear, what Paul is saying here to Timothy is that all scriptures, which would be the entire Bible, right? All of this, not merely the Old Testament and the extra books that were considered to be scripture by the people at that time, but all scripture and the epistles, the various gospels that were being sent around, the revelations and uh, apocryphas, they're all scripture. Now, I, I will say that there are some scholars that say that Paul spoke out against the Gnostics. And so therefore, I don't know that he believed that all writings were scripture. But I'm only saying that as a side note. I don't really know that he actually was against the Gnostics. I do know that he understood that there were wolves in sheep's clothing trying to teach another gospel. And that's, that's always happening as long as the gospel is on the earth, unfortunately. But I do believe that when he says all scripture, I think he means all scripture. So I think that were Paul alive today, he would explore the Book of Mormon. I know a lot of Protestants and Catholics probably don't like that idea, but it's true. And the reality is that even though there is a Catholic Bible, I've got one on my shelf back there, it has different books, as a majority of the same books as the you know most Protestant Bibles. But the Bible isn't always even the Bible. If you look at the Ethiopian Christians Bible, the Catholic Bible, very different Protestant Bibles, there are certain books that are added, certain books that are left out. There are core books that everybody shares, don't get me wrong. But it's not like Mormons are special because we add the Book of Mormon. The reality is that there are a lot of different Bibles, and I own a lot of different Bibles, and they aren't all exactly the same. They're translated differently. And like I said, they've got, they have different books. So this idea of Mormons adding the Book of Mormon to Scripture, I don't think that that works because of the different Bibles, and also because of what Timothy says here. I'm sorry, what Paul says to Timothy here, that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. So. That's easy for me to say because I'm a Latter-day Saint. But it gets tricky because being a Latter-day Saint means that we don't just have the Bible and the Book of Mormon. If you look at Doctrine of the Saints, section 3b, reading verses 8 and 9, and this is our Constitution, by the way, we believe the Word of God recorded in the Bible. We also believe the Word of God recorded in the Book of Mormon and in other good books. We believe all that God has revealed all that he does now reveal. And we believe that he will yet reveal many great and important things pertaining to the kingdom of God and Messiah's second coming. Doesn't that sound like an expansion, a longer version of what Paul is saying to Timothy here? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So if you look at the Open Scriptures Project, and I'm just going to pull that up right now while while I'm chatting with you. And that's openscriptures.net, by the way. You can see here, if you click on the library link, and this is just scratching the surface. If you look at this website, you're not going to find all the scriptures that are in some way related to the Latter-day Saint movement. If you go to the Holy Bible section, it not only has currently just four different versions of the Bible, there's obviously a lot more that need to be uploaded here. In here we have 
various apocryphal works and pseudepigraphal works. We have the Dead Sea Scrolls. And, and this, again, it doesn't even scratch the surface. Now, what about the Book of Mormon? That's easy, right? There's just the Book of Mormon. It's pretty cut and dry. Mm, no, not so much. Number one, there are several different editions of the Book of Mormon because of the different churches that use the Book of Mormon. And in fact, the Snufferites, and I, I know they don't like being called that. I apologize. No one likes being called by their nickname, but unfortunately, it's how we identify each other in the movement. They have the Stick of Joseph, which I really like. I've got a PDF of it here. I, I'm really excited about getting a hardback copy. This actually is the Book of Mormon rewritten for the Jews. Now, it's a little bit tricky because they didn't use the RAV or the OPV, which would be what Community of Christ uses for their chapter and verses and what the Brighamites use for their chapter and verses. So, for example, 1 Nephi 1.17, Behold, I make an abridgment of the record of my father upon the plates, which I have made with mine own hands. But here in verse 117, it says, And it came to pass that I was constrained by the Spirit that I should kill Laban. But I said in my heart, Never at any time have I shed the blood of man. So they're using a completely different style, and it is not included in the Universal Book of Mormon, because number one, when I put that together, this book wasn't out yet. And number two, this is so different because the names are different. It's it's very much rewritten for the Jews, the, the those the Jewish people to read. And I really, really appreciate them doing this. And I'm very excited about this work. I think it's unfortunate that they chose to make it hard to compare to the English version of the book, the, the straight up Joseph Smith English version of the Book of Mormon. And I'm hoping that at some point they will use the Universal Book of Mormon chapter and versing system, uh, maybe in combination with what they have here, which they are welcome to do, so that we can really compare and contrast and find these things and go back and forth without using charts and all that kind of nonsense. In the meantime, that is another version of the Book of Mormon. In addition to that, we have Hava Pratt's revelations tied to the Book of Mormon. We have David Israel's Oracles of Mahanrai. We have the Sealed Book of Mormon from Recio Berger. And then from there, we have two different groups of people who claim to be translating the records of the people that Haggoth took to the north. And both could be correct. I'm sure that he went to more than one place. And those people traveled around. And again, this doesn't even scratch the surface. This is a project that myself and some others are working on. And we don't all have time to go and find all the scriptures. I would love for all these groups and all these people that are receiving these to come and bring them so we can get them on the website and we can do some cross-pollinating and let people know that they exist. But in the meantime, this is a start. Modern Revelations. We have the Book of Commandments, the various Doctrine and Covenances, Revelations of James Strang, we have the word of the Lord brought to mankind by an angel, hidden treasures and promises, and so on and so forth. All these different modern revelations given to us as Latter-day Saints. And again, this doesn't even scratch the surface. Hymn books, other Latter-day Saint translations, other books that aren't the Book of Mormon that have been translated. The Book of the Law of the Lord, the Book of Nations, and so on and so forth. We have Kabbalistic books on here that are tied to the movement in a sense because of Mormon Kabbalah. We do have the Gnostic texts on here. And I've even met Latter-day Saints who read New Age books like A Course in Miracles. And so there's a New Age section here. So there's all these books. And the question becomes, are they scripture? Here, brothers and sisters, is where I want to flip the script. So Paul is telling Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, I fully believe that one way to interpret this is to say that that's what all scripture is literally for. If you have a book of scripture, that's what you use it for. But now I want to turn this around because one of the questions people have is, Am I supposed to study all these books? 
This is a lot. This is an overwhelming lot. I think that as Latter-day Saints, we can use this scripture here in 2 Timothy and, and ask ourselves, well, I'm reading this book, I'm looking at it, and do I feel inspired by God when I read this? Do I feel the Lord's hand as I read this book? I want you to look at this scripture two ways. Number one, I want you to understand that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means that the Lord, the Holy Spirit of the Lord flowed through someone. And then through that person, the things that were written down are inspired by God. And that means whether they happen or not. Job, I don't know if Job happened. It's still scripture. The author of it, it was still inspired by God. All scripture is profitable for doctrine. We can teach with it. For reproof. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. And flipping that around. If you're not sure what scripture should be in your personal canon. I'm going to tell you right now. Anything that you feel is inspired of God. Anything you find profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. That's your canon. That's the great thing about having an open canon. Whatever the Lord speaks to you through, that is your scripture. But, you know, like I said, going through the, the, the few books that we have in the Open Scriptures Project, openscriptures.net, we don't have time to read and study all these books. So follow the Spirit and only, only use the ones that you feel were inspired by God. That doesn't mean that somebody else can't think it's inspired by God or can't feel it's inspired by God. But the one that the Lord is telling you to study and read, the one that, that, that the Lord is telling you is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. So what that means is, and this is the message, that if I have three saints standing there and one of them says, this is definitely, I'm going to keep going with this example, this is definitely scripture, then we need to understand that for that person, it is scripture. For the person who says, mm, no, I don't, I don't like it, it's not. And that's okay. I worry that we as a species not even as latter-day saints are so stuck on this idea of being correct and then everyone else being wrong if they don't agree with us that we lose a lot of valuable things so my seventh message for you today is this Find what is scripture for you and respect what is scripture for others. That's my Sabbath message and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'd just like to say that you you have a happy Sabbath and uh, uh, we'll end with a prayer. Heavenly Father, let that spirit continue to be with us today and this week that we can be your hands and feet in our world, that we can show your love, and that we can feel your love through the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we thank you, and I say these things through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. This brothers and sisters, prayer night on Thursday night. Uh, about 7.30 in the UK, and I think it's about 2 o'clock in America. Uh, if you'd like to know more, uh, see the link which will be on the video, either above my head or below my head. Take care. Peace be with you all. Amen.